welcome to the sweltering national ice rink in Cardiff. Four titles are up for grabs. We have a boxing extravaganza. Hello, good evening to all. If you're thinking about calling it a day, please don't. Because coming up, we have a young man who's making very big waves in the boxing world. He's unbeaten, he's confident, and I feel very sure he's going to be a world champion in 1995. It's a bit past his bedtime as well. It's Prince Nassim Hamed. It's the greatest buzz that you can get. People don't understand the buzz you can get out of boxing and getting into that ring and everybody focused on you. And you can't describe the feeling. Welshman Robbie Regan tries to regain his European flyweight crown. His career depends on the result. The British heavyweight title's on offer. A great chance for Derby's unbeaten Clifton Mitchell. But he's in with the giant James Oyabola. The finish is very dramatic. So much to pack in tonight. Also, Cardiff's Nicky Piper goes in with the Yorkshireman Crawford Ashley for the vacant British light heavyweight crown, and that is another outstanding battle. Barry McGuigan is with me. Barry, let's talk about Prince Nassim Ahmed. Are we praising him too much too early? Well, I think his last performance was quite breathtaking. Hand speed was incredible, that of a cat. Punching power was incredible. He just looks a, a, an awesome prospect. And obviously, he's got to keep winning and keep performing the way he has done. I'm sure he's going to perform tonight. This boxing world, though, is full of pitfalls, isn't it? Most definitely. And, you know, anything can happen. And it, to some of tonight's performances are absolutely fantastic. And he's got to keep producing the form. He's got to keep winning. Big day for you this week, Barry, I think. Thursday, a little visit to a, a big house. What yeah. happened there? Yes, yeah, so I went and got my MBE with my family and my, my son, Blaine, and my daughter, yeah. Danique, and my wife, Sandra. So yeah. we had a great time. And it was lovely to be honoured in that way. Absolutely smashing. Well done from us Thanks all, well. Barry. Prince uh, Nassim Mohammed, though, down there and all set and ready to go. It's what, just after 11.15, it's a bit late for Nassim to be going to work. He said he was going to chill out in the hotel. But Prince Nassim, a bit of flexing for the cameras, ready to go. And Nassim Mohammed will be in action in a couple of minutes' time. National Ice Rink in Cardiff, a great boxing arena these days. The Welsh fans really enjoy the fight game. We've had a terrific night already. There are highlights coming up later on. But now we await the entry of Nassim Ahmed. First defence of his international super bantamweight title, the belt he won in superb style last month. There might just be a mixed reception from him here because Steve Robinson's a local hero and Nassim Ahmed has made no secret of the fact that he wants to fight Robinson and he feels he can beat him. Now if you look at this and say, that reminds me of Mr Chris Eubank, Nassim's answer is that Eubank copied this particular act and copied a lot of his moves in the ring as well. Eubank naturally disagrees. He's come a cropper vaulting into the ring before. There's his dad, a very proud dad indeed. Gymnastic routine from Prince Nassim Ahmed.
Here's your MC for the night. It's Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is being sanctioned and conducted under the rules of the World Boxing Council, whose supervisor at ringside is Mr. Simon Block of London. The British Boxing Board of Control Steward is Lord Brooks of Tremorpa, and the officials appointed for this contest by the WBC are the judges at ringside, Daniel Van der Veel of Belgium, Mr. John Coyle of Wolverhampton. The referee in charge of the action, who also scores the contest, is Mr. Mickey Van from Leeds. The timekeeper, so just to throw Mr. To the Gordon contest. Pape of Swansea, and the matchmaker, Mr. Ernie Fossey of London. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Saturday night is Big Fight Night, live on ITV. And tonight from the National Ice Rink Cardiff, Frank Warren and the Sports Network present the Grand Slam of four championship contests for five titles. Sponsored by Empress Car Sales and proudly present a contest of 12 three-minute rounds for the WBC International Super Bantamweight Championship. Between introducing the boxers, fighting from the uh, red corner, coming from the Dominican Republic, a professional record from 18 contests of 17 wins with just one draw, seven wins coming by way of KO. He's the former undefeated IBF Intercontinental Bantamweight Champion, the challenger for the title, Loreno Ramirez. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, wearing the leopard trunks, coming from Sheffield and the Yemen, he is undefeated in 14 contests, 12 contests coming by way of KO. He comes to the ring this evening, the undefeated bantamweight champion of Europe and the international super bantamweight champion, making his first defense of the title. Ladies and gentlemen, Prince Nazina Amir. At the official weigh-in, Ramirez went scaled eight stone seven and three quarter pounds. Ahmed eight stone ten pounds. The WBC International Super Bantamweight Championship. So the pre-fight formalities are over. Let's join your big fight commentary team. It's Jim Watts, and he's alongside the maestro. Good evening to Reg Guttridge. Well, there it is. Uh, the, the referee, Mickey Van, he won't stand for any nonsense here, but he, he was quite controlled by his standards, actually, in that Nassim had. Uh, he's little, compared with you, Bank, he's a little old Fontenroy, I think. But uh, certainly got an unusual gum shield there. Uh, white in the middle, and uh, I think it's black and red. Difficult to tell. Look. Looks a bit like Bugs Bunny when he does a smile as he can down the aisle there. Now, it's all putting the puzzle together, this jigsaw with this boy, whether he really is the real thing. He's certainly beginning to look like it, so well, let's see how Ramirez, who can't be that bad if he's unbeaten, can give us any answers. Well, that was the point. In, in the gymnasium here, we checked on Ramirez. He sparred orthodox, but it was said he was a southpaw. But, uh, Ahmed actually asked me that and I said I wasn't sure but I think he is and he said good because I like fighting Southport I think he likes fighting anybody the man is good and he loves the acclaim and uh, as Barry McGuigan was saying his last show with another fighter from the Dominion Republic Freddie Cruz was absolutely brilliant I don't know whether this fellow will provide answers because he's, he, he, he's never really been in with major names, although he held an, an IBF version of uh, what's called a sort of intercontinental title. That's the, the one below the major title. So although he's barred or, or orthodox in the gymnasium, apparently is a natural southpaw, this fellow. See, I think we need to see uh, Hamid against a fighter who's on the up, whose career is rising, who really fancies the game. His, his last two victories have been tremendous, and, and the manner of them has been really 
breathtaking, but you have to see him against someone who really still fancies the game. It was two men who had been well past their best. So it'd be nice to see Hamed against somebody. Maybe Ramirez can answer a few questions here. He looks lively enough, and he's making the Hamed miss, so he's certainly sharp enough. Certainly Ramirez's hairstyle looks handy for him. Jim almost like a head guard, the thickness of that hair. Oh well, just one of them be from one of the older school. But he got down to business so well in Sheffield, didn't he? Hamed, and uh, hoping he's going to keep that. And, you know, he's, he's, all the tricks he does, it's very attractive, and he, he can pull it off, and he's, it's marvellous uh, the way he gets away from punches all the time, a real Houdini job. Yeah, he has tremendous reflexes. I mean, he does things that you wouldn't want the uh, boys in the gymnasium to do, but he's so good at doing them, he gets away with it. Tremendous reflexes. But he's missing, and he's not bullying Ramed Ramirez. He's not managed to bully this man in the first minute or so, so maybe a couple of questions that will be answered. Well, there's one thing for sure, the, the Welsh crowd are not particularly on his side. They, they cheered the Dominican Republic guy there. He incidentally lives in Barcelona, actually, now. First visit to Britain. When he stands his ground there, Jim Hammond, you know, he's, he's really such a competent boxer, he doesn't need all the frippery to go with it. Yeah, but I suppose if you want to become a big name like in the entertainment world, you need a little bit extra, and I think he's got that. Just a, a short, sharp word there from the referee, Mickey Van, back to your corner. So that's, he's been with Brendan Ingle now, Hamed, since he was seven years old. He's, he loves the game, he's always in gymnasiums, trains very hard indeed, goes and watches his pals. He's, he's just in love with boxing and success at the age of 20. There he is, make me look pretty for the cameras, I bet he's saying that. And he's not been beyond the six rounds, 11 fights inside four rounds, this fellow. Super bantamweights, eight stone, 10 pounds, 122 pounds. That's between uh, bantam and featherweight. Almost like the styptic pencil he was using there, yeah, it's a bit unusual. So, second round then. Try and do his usual catch as catch can job here, Hamid Jim. Yeah, he's just trying to draw a lead at the moment, that's what he's doing. Yeah. But then in his last two fights against quality opposition, he's managed to bully the opposition right from the first bell. In the, in the European fight, he floored the opponent straight away as the first bell rang. Well, he hasn't done that here. A fairly quiet start by his own standards, but he's not been hit. It's just a little bit untidy. It's amazing, he has no occupational fear at all, is he? He's not getting his own punches home yet. I don't, I don't think this, this fella cares anything about the showbiz size, but he wants to get on with it. Well, his movements are sharp enough. The couple of times eh, Hamid has tried to draw him into a mistake, he's managed to pull his head out of range. So at least his movements are sharp enough, so Hamid is going to have to go looking for this fellow, step up a little bit closer. Touch of the needle there, Hamid. So, no, if that's the way you want it. Oh, good shots, Jim, aren't they? You know, once he goes to work, you always get the feeling he can do it when he, when he decides it's time. 
there a couple of points in this fight he's looked a little bit untidy Jim, that was the sort of shot that he caught Freddy Cruiser that turned the whole fight at lead uppercut. Yeah, but Ramirez is still moving nice and sharply. Yeah. He's not managing to land any counters, but he's making Hamed miss. So at least he's going to draw out a kind of decent performance from him. Hamed's stepping a little bit closer now, trying to get that jab on target. It's almost in slow motion, that, isn't it? Look. I'm just trying to draw the lead. See, the crowd will go, I knew they'd do that. Into the third round. Very little at the start of the opening round, hardly a clean punch landed, but there was just a spell there from Hamed. He, he tries to knock people out with every punch he throws. So that's why he's sort of taking his time. We've seen him do this in, in longer distance fights before. So Lad Ramirez at 28. He, he boxed in the Los Angeles Olympics, I didn't remember that. He got, he got to the quarterfinals. I didn't turn pro till he was 23. The thing is, uh, Ramirez hasn't shown an awful lot of ambition himself in the first couple of rounds. Uh, I think he realises this early just how difficult it is to catch Shehamed. But if he wants some success, he's going to have to step in himself and try to get these punches off. He, a little bit apprehensive uh, with his own punches, Ramirez. So he's, he's just poking that right hand out. That's not. You couldn't call that a jab. He knew what happened to his countryman, Freddy Cruz. That was better. Oh, that was better. That That's, was better. You see, now he took a decent shot. Oh, that was naughty. A definite push there. The referee, the crowd don't like that. The referee has got to do something about that. Yeah. I mean, that was both elbows in his face almost. That was outrageous. Mickey Van has to have a word with him about this. Yeah, I said. I said from the start, he won't stand for it. He handled the Bruno and Lewis fight, he's handled many top world championships. So he said to him, OK, he's given him as long enough rest as he wants. Well, now we're going to get a little bit of spite entering into it now. Yeah, well, I, think, silly, I think he lost his temper a bit there, I think he's annoyed himself. He knows by his own standards that uh, this is not his best for him. So far he's been, up, been able to back up his boast and uh, I'm sure he probably will do here but I'd like I'd like to see it just a bit cleaner he's got moving the quality stuff and that was the best punch he's landed so far that was a good little solid oh, no, no. One. Same punch. oh he's turned away he doesn't want it this guy does he what's happened there I don't know if I took it I get the impression there's it's possible a tooth has been loosened with that punch Weird. oh well that was his jaw was loosened with that he, he, he just flopped over there like wet laundry fall, falling on the floor, but he, there was something wrong with his tooth there. Now he doesn't want it. Doesn't I think he didn't. Yeah, I get the impression that tooth is He's in. quit in the third round. Uh, well, he didn't expect that, or we didn't expect that. I suppose Hamid says, yes, I did expect that. But Jimmy, you were quite right. It looked as though he had a problem with the tooth there as he turned away. It must, it must hit with some strength, this guy, you know, I mean, he's a rough old customer, Ramirez, he's been around a bit and unbeaten. Admittedly, as I said at the start, not with major names, but a good old pro, they are, that gives him a crisp as well. Yeah, well, probably not his smoothest performance, but uh, when you don't box your best, it's nice if you can finish it with one shot, and that's exactly what he's done. The finishing shot was a beauty, the punch that set it up looked to me, the way he looked away and pointed to his mouth, it was as though maybe a tooth had been loosened uh, with that shot. This is the one, bangs it. That was right in the mouth, and that's when he turned away, and it's quite possible that there was some damage to maybe his tooth with that punch. I'm not sure, but that's what it looked like. Yeah, the referee did well there, but turned him round and, you know, made sure that he wanted to carry on. He couldn't just stop it because he had his back to the opponent. 
Yeah, well, I think after that punch, he didn't really want to go on. And the finishing punch was a beauty. Oh, Bang. Bingo, he had that no option there, did he? The lights were out for it. Soon recovered, mind you. But this kid can punch him. Oh, yeah, you see, he has natural power. If you look at the, the strength he has in his legs and the way he sets himself, I mean, and when you look at Hamed's legs, you see he can go up a couple of divisions and uh, once he fills out a bit. He didn't know what town he was in there, I don't think, Ramirez. From... He loves all this, doesn't he, Hamid? I can't say I blame him, do you? You know, you, you know what that feeling is when you've had a good result like that. And... Well, he's, he's become the new television star, if nothing else, John. There's still a little bit of mystery about him that we seem to enjoy, don't we? Yeah, well, uh, I suppose he, he keeps knocking out people who don't get knocked out, right? You can't ask for any better than that. No, absolutely. He's, he's a strong guy and so different. Just clear up that fight. I mean, the guy swallowed it actually. Uh, it wasn't your fault that, but he, he swallowed, swallowed it. it. Yes. I don't know. Think he swallowed it because. Well, when you hit him first of all, he wanted to quit, and then when you, before you knocked him down. He never swallowed it. He took a very good right hook, but uh, he did turn his back on me. But he came straight back into the fight, and I hit him with a real good shot. That's why he went well, down. Let's see the punch that finished it. You see the punch? It was a good punch. This actually, when you finished it. Mental power, respect. Look at this. Watch this. Boom. That is a, gone? Look, that's, look at that. Look at that. He's gone. That, that is not so. That's that a proper. Right. That's not, that's that, not, that, not, let me just mention that is a proper right hook. Yeah, that but what happened before right that, Nas? What happened before that when he turned his back on the he corner? He, he, he took some I pain. saw him and he shook he his head. He took some pain. What can I say? He took some pain and he turned his back because he knew he was going to get beat from then onwards, but he never swallowed it. He turned back round to fight. He was tricky. I seen his movement on his feet. I seen his movement with his head. He, he was unbeaten, never been stopped. Number four in the world. IBF champion, number three in the Let's, IBF. Gary, all I've got to say is, when I fight for the world title, I'm going to be so good. But I'll tell you what, I'm let, me stop world you. Champ. Yes, let me just stop you. Tonight, you didn't have one of your better nights up to that finish. I mean, I you made struggled a prediction a bit before by the your fight. standards. To everybody, I made a prediction before the fight, Gary. No, I'm talking to about you. your performance. Forget the prediction. Yeah, all right. No, no, let me just tell you first. I made a prediction before the fight that I was going to go three rounds. To you, to everybody, to the public, to the media, I said I'm going to go three rounds. As you're ducking, I, you're ducking my question. I'm not ducking. I'm going to come back on it now, Gary. I'm going to come back on it, my brother. Now, I let the jab go, and I kept going with the jab, and I kept it nice and easy. Nice and easy. The third round came. That was my round. Allah said to me, that was your round. What about the first two rounds? Let's talk about the first two rounds. The we know, first, we know the what first two through. rounds, I snapped my jab out. I snapped my jab out. It was in his face. I caught him with some really good jabs. I was softening him up, ready for the third round to take him out. Third round came, I took him out. Simple actually, as that. Actually, Naz, we know how good you are, but the first two rounds weren't your best tonight. The first two rounds, as I say. The third round weren't bad, that's all that counts. Oh, baby, this is my promoter, Frank Warren. Quick, Brendan Inga, look, quick word from the promoter here. on my the next fight. Yeah. Next fight will be in uh, Glasgow <laughs> on the 21st of January, when we'll be naming the opponent within the next couple of weeks. And I thought he'd done a great performance tonight. The guy Frank. is a southpaw, oh, 18 oh, fights, undefeated, oh, number four in the world. Oh, and he got beaten by a 22, 20 year old. Oh, the opponent was, thank it you It hurts being this good, it hurts. Oh, baby. Nicky, mental power respect. If you hang on, the you can put your hands in the middle of the can put your hands in the middle of the field. He's a quiet, reserved, shy man, really. Nazim Hamed trading a few verbal punches there with Gary Newborn. A dramatic third round ending. And whether he fancied the fight or not, I don't think his opponent or any opponent would have stood up from a right hand like that. We have got a lot more very exciting boxing to pack in for you here tonight on ITV. And we're going to show you next a really good battle for the European Flyweight Championship between a very accomplished Italian champion, Luigi Camputaro, and Robbie Regan, the Welshman who really has been the victim of boxing politics. Should have had a world title shot a long time ago.
Anyway, Camputaro, he started really well. Regan hadn't mixed in this sort of company for a while, and he was really up against it. We're going to join the fight coming up to the sixth round.